Hello everybody, uh, my name is Khaled Siddiqui and in this video I'm going to teach you how to modify a uh, floppy drive emulator for a Technique Scan 5000 keyboard. As I mentioned in my previous videos, uh, nowadays they're making a floppy disk emulator which replaces your old floppy uh, disk drive in your keyboard uh, and with this you could simply put a USB flash drive to use it. Now I have more detailed videos uh, that I've already made previously that explains how to use it. However, as I mentioned in that video, for each uh, keyboard, uh, the requirement is different, uh, the configuration is different. Uh, some require software modification, some require hardware modification, and so on. Now the Techniques KN5000 does not only require software modification, it also requires hardware modifications and I'm going to tell you how to do that all right so first thing we need to do is open this we have to open this and put a switch here do a couple of solderings and, and whatnot and that's how we fix this issue so let's get on to it and this is how we do it so first I'm gonna open these screws three screws this whole cover comes out okay take the screws they're like that keep them somewhere safe so you don't lose them now we have an empty area right here that's where we have to drill and put a temporary switch like this one and we have to press the switch like that to make a temporary connection between pin 6 and the ground for the keyboard to detect the floppy uh, the USB flash drive otherwise it's not going to read it so let's do that first we have to remove this these uh, switches are uh, easily available online you can get it from Amazon or you can get it from eBay it's nothing uh, nothing special it's just a temporary switch temporary connection okay so now we need to drill a hole right here where there's a little dot we need to drill a hole hole to put the switch question is what size drill tip should we use and here are our drill tips let's look at the drill tips and see which size is best for us so the way you do is you see that this hole uh, uh, the tapping of the, the threads the threads of this uh, screw uh, mounting mechanism must go through that hole so the it should be something more like this size I believe let me see no that's too small but what we need to do is we need to put a smaller hole like a guiding hole and then increase the size gradually instead of creating a bigger hole in the beginning so here's my drill I'm going to put a smaller hole first Okay, that's a smaller hole. Now I'm going to make a bigger hole. Let's do the 732s. Let's see. Okay, even this hole appears to be a little small. Yeah, it is small. We have to go one size bigger. So let me put this one back. But you have to do it gradually. Otherwise, the, the hole will not be nice and round. Okay, that one appears to be the right size, I believe. Let's try it again. And bingo, it is the right size. Okay, now let's see how we're going to do this. We have to remove this nut to get enough length for that. And then we put this guy. Where is that little? We put this guy on this side. And we put this guy on this side. And we put our nut.
Okay, now we need to tighten the nut with a plier or something to that nature. So I'm going to use this plier. Now you can put back the cover. And now we have to solder. Okay, notice the switch has uh, common, normally open, normally connected. See that? One is common, normally open, normally connected. I'm going, going to double check to make sure I read that correctly. Yeah, the center is normally open, and this one is normally connected. We need the normally open and the common. These two is what we need to, to deal with them, to solder. Okay? So let's grab a wire long enough to solder that. This should be plenty, and I need one more wire. We need two wires. I guess these two are even better because they're longer. I'm going to use the gray and the blue wire. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is cut these wires and strip them. Okay, now we are going to use some solder, the good old solder, normal solder. Okay. The soldering iron is set to 700 degrees. Now we will put solder on these. Okay, that's good. Let's get our blue wire. That's also good. Okay, now one goes to pin six, the other goes to ground. Let's identify pin six. Now, pin 6 is very easy to identify. It says pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, pin 6 will be the third pin on the top. That is your pin 6 right there. Now, I could uh, open this and do the soldering from the bottom, but you don't necessarily have to. You have to have a very fine point soldering tip so you don't create solder bridges or damage uh, other pins with solder. Okay. It doesn't matter which wire goes where because it's just a temporary connection switch. Normally open. When you press it, it gets connected. Remember that. It's normally open. When you press it, it they get connected. And then when you let go, it get disconnected again. Temporary switch is what that means. I'm gonna use a little bit of soldering paste. This is the normal rosin soldering paste. Okay, this is a little tricky because you have little room to work with. And it looks like a successful 
soldering. Uh, I don't know if that's too... Is that a successful soldering? Let me reheat it a little bit. Okay, now it's much better. Okay, now make sure that the pin doesn't touch anything else. Basically, you don't want to short circuit two different, two other pins adjacent to that. So I'm going to give it a good 90 degree turn. There you go. A good 90 degree turn. And there it is. Okay, my second one goes to the ground. This is ground right here. It says on it ground, G and D. You can follow this trace. This is the best place right there. Let's do it there. So, I'm going to put some solder there. Oh, I need to strip it. I hadn't stripped. Okay, there you go. I'm going to put some solder. And put some solder on this wire. And put the puppy in here. I think I should put some solder on this wire too. Okay, now that's, it's a little unsafe, so I'm going to redo this, because I don't want my wire to overlap. The wire shouldn't overlap to other circuitry, so I'm going to cut this shorter and redo this. And that's much better, because the wire is not overlapping on this area. So basically, what this switch does is when you press the switch, it grounds pin number six and then when you let go the switch it undoes the ground releases the ground so let's put the wires aside nice and neatly and put back the cover we don't need these anymore so we put these aside and here is the cover we put back the cover okay now see that that really looks ugly I really don't like that let me put it from the bottom side I'm gonna put this from the bottom side because I really I like to work neat and that's not neat at all so let's put this from the bottom side I mean you could do that if you're okay with it but I really don't like it yeah to be honest I'm gonna put it from the bottom side to the pin number six okay There you go. Now I'm going to cut the wire like that. And I'm going to put some solder on pin number six. And put this puppy in there. And bingo, much cleaner, much neater than how it was before. And it doesn't even show on this side. It's all clean, nice and neat. See, nothing is showing here now. It's all nice and clean. Okay, 
Now while we have these open, it's not a bad idea to put a drop of super glue because these usually get pushed in. That's something that I noticed from factory. Uh, there's a little protective plastic that you can remove. And you put a little bit of super glue. And that should be enough to hold this in place. There you go. And then we put this back. Everything looks good. Yep. Now it's much more neat. See, you don't see the wires. Now this only works for KN5000. You cannot use this in a different keyboard. Techniques KN5000 music keyboard. Now each keyboard is different. Like I said, some require modification of hardware, some require modification of software, and some require both mo modification of hardware and software. That's why don't think that any, uh, that's the reason why all of these range in price on eBay from $10 to $200. Because the ones that are more expensive, people have spent hours, you know, figuring out the internal firmware to be compatible with a specific device you're using it for, especially for the Atari. Uh, they actually completely uh, modified the software to work for, for the Atari. And there you go. This is nice and tight. And you have a switch. And now it should be just plug and play with uh, Techniques KN5000 uh, uh, Music Keyboard. All right. So thank you for watching. Mm, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.